What's up guys, Justin here with TheRenderingEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how we can create an animated file really quickly in Blender and then bring it into Twin Motion with the animation applied. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, and so the first thing that you're gonna to need to do is you wanna make sure that you're using the Twin Motion Community Edition 2023.2 Preview 2 or above, because Preview 2 is when they added the animation ability. So make sure that you're using that version when you bring this in. What that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to bring in animated FBX, uh, I think GLB and GLTF files into twin motion and you can really do this with any of those files that have these animations applied to them but what we're going to do is we're going to jump over into blender so um, blender is a free 3d modeling program that you can use in order to create um, all sorts of different stuff but in this case specifically i'm going to bring in a sketchfab model so i have the sketchfab add-on built in and what I want to do and I can link to a video about the sketchfab add-on but what I want to do is I want to import this windmill stylized all right and so this example model is the windmill stylized from Alexander um, if you don't want to mess around with the uh, add-on for blender you could just download the 3d model file itself and bring that in as well but this is published under a Creative Commons attribution license but what I want to do is I want to import that model into blender real quick and so that brings in a bunch of complicated stuff which I don't really want to worry too much about in this video um, we're just gonna delete out the armatures that are in here for example and um, what we want to do is we want to create an animation where these rotate right and so we're gonna do this in a very simple way so what I want to do is I just want to keyframe the movement of this object and so what I want to do is I want to select it and I want to set it up where it rotates around the central point well notice how the objects pivot point is in the wrong location so if we were to do that right now it would fly around like this so all we need to do to fix that is just select the object and go to object set origin to geometry what that's going to do is that's going to move that pivot point to the middle of the geometry right in here now we can use this in order to create this animation and so remember in Blender that really what you want to do is you want to set up a keyframe of the rotation of this object. And so what we want to do is we want to use the timeline down here in order to do that. So I have the timeline active and what I want to do is I want to keyframe the rotation of this object. Right, and this is acting a little bit weird, so we're gonna go ahead and adjust this to XYZ Euler um, like this. That's gonna make this work a lot better. But basically what we wanna do is we wanna set a keyframe where the object is at zero, right? So in the rotation of your object transform, you can just right click and click on insert keyframes. And then at 250, I want this to have rotated negative 360 degrees, right? I want it to have done one full rotation in this animation. So we're gonna type in negative 360 right here. We're gonna right click and we're gonna keyframe this again. And you don't need a ton of Blender knowledge in order to do this. We more just wanna create this animated model real quick and bring it into twin motion. But now if I click on play, notice how this is going to do one full rotation in our scene, right? It's going to rotate 360 degrees over 250 frames. Now, one thing that you do need to adjust though is you want this to loop continuously in twin motion. So we need to set it up where it's gonna loop continuously in Blender. What's happening right now is it kind of like eases in, right? If I click on this, notice how it's slow and then it speeds up and then near the end, it kind of slows down again. We don't want that. We wanna jump into our graph editor for this animation right here and we just want to right click and set our interpolation type to linear that is going to set it so this just rotates that same speed the whole time right so i'm gonna go back into my timeline right here i'm gonna click on the play button and notice how now this moves at the same speed throughout the entire 250 frames of this video and so now that we're done with this we want to take this animated model and we want to export it so that we can bring it into twin motion and have it animated and so to do this it's actually really simple you can just go up to file and do an export and remember that your export type is going to be important now you can export as an FBX 
or a gltf file or a .glb file. Um, and so we don't want to export this as an FBX because the FBX packages all the textures separately. What that means is that means if you import this into twin motion, it's going to come in without colors, which we don't want. So instead, we're going to do a file export. We want to export this as this gltf 2.0. And we're going to find a location where we want to save this. And I'm just going to call this something like windmill right here. Now you can set this either as a GLB or a GLTF, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this just as a GLB because um, it worked pretty well um, when I brought it into twin motion earlier. One thing you do want to do is you want to make sure that you check the box for animation when you export this so that that animation data is included in this model. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to export this GLTF 2.0 file. Well, now we can jump over into twin motion and let's go ahead and let's create a new scene so i'm just going to do a file new scene and real quick if you were to import the fbx file it's going to look something like this um, which is what it's going to look like without the textures so you really want to make sure that you do that gltf file so that you get the textures but we'll just do a new scene real quick we'll go ahead and we'll delete out this default sphere thing and we're just going to go to our import and click on the plus button and in this preview version, there's an option in here for animation, right? So we have been doing a geometry. In this case, we want to bring in an animation. So we're just going to click on open and we're just going to go find that windmill file and click on open. And notice how there's options in here for UVs and precision normals. I just leave those checked and I just leave the uniform scale factor at one. I'm going to click on import. And so if we look at this, what this does is this does exactly what you would expect, right? It brings in the windmill as an animated model type. And notice how these different things are in here um, and you can kind of move them around. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can. Um, you can edit the individual parts and pieces inside of this animated object. And so you do have the option in here to play the animation one time or to loop it. And in this case, because we set the animation to do a full loop in the 250 frames in here, this is just gonna rotate constantly. So you could put something like this in the background if you wanted to. And then you could come in here and you could adjust things like the speed of the animation in here if you wanted this to go a little bit faster. You could set it where it had to start delay. I don't think you necessarily want to do that, but you can if it's something that doesn't need to loop, right? If it's like a walking person animation or something like that. All right, so in general, that's how you're gonna import your animations into Twin Motion. Super easy to use. If you do wanna learn more about how to use Twin Motion, make sure you check out my course at therenderingessentials.com slash Twin Motion course. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.